All right, everybody, excited to bring in a guy who needs no introduction, doing a hell of a job over there at the Blaze, host of Fearless, Mr. Jason Whitlock. Jason, I appreciate you joining us, man. Appreciate you guys having me. Man, I thought you were bringing me on to talk about Will Smith. <laughs> hey, listen, we did a whole in-depth breakdown yesterday yeah. on what was the better slap, Will Smith or Jawan Howard, and we came to a point uh, Jason, yesterday, where we felt like Jawan Howard had to go through a lot more adversity to get to the <laughs> assistant coach at Wisconsin, going through different people, had a chance to to you know get his thoughts together. Will Smith was unimpeded going up there, but I just I feel like it was staged a little bit. What do you think? Don't think it was staged. Mm. I, I will say this: I, I, you're comparing who had a more difficult time getting to there. Yeah, which uh, adversity, victim. more adversity yeah. to get to the slap. It has to be Jawan, which to me gives yeah, him more credit. It has to be Jawan, but where I'm giving Will the nod is Jawan, you know, blamed his punch on his elbow being touched by the head coach. <laughs> uh, Will Smith blamed punching Chris Rock on God. Yeah, and so, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that's tough. Yeah, that, 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 that's tough. I, I, I think Jawan had a better explanation than Will. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree, and uh, what a very interesting turn of events uh, at the Oscars. But speaking of turn of events, now that Kyrie Irving can play for the Nets, going through this whole debacle, which we've watched, uh, and again, opinions on that are opinions on that. But now that he's back with the Nets with KD, and Jason, I understand Ben Simmons, uh, kind of the third head of that Hydra a little bit, is still going to be out with that herniated disc. But when you look at the East and the NBA in general, how legit of a threat are the Nets with Kyrie and KD uh, to win an NBA championship, even though, I mean, they don't play a whole hell of a lot of defense. Uh, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I've never paid since, – since the bubble, I've only really paid attention to the NBA come playoff time. Mm -hmm. I can't stand mm -hmm. these guys. All the Black Lives Matter stuff turned me off. Uh, I am rooting for the Brooklyn Nets and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie's one of the few guys in the NBA that showed a pair. Uh, you know, he and Jonathan Isaacs, who stood. Jonathan Isaacs, the kid that stood up mm -hmm. uh, for the national anthem during the bubble season. Uh, so Kyrie is is my favorite NBA player. I want him to do well. I think the Nets can do well. I think the NBA has proven that their regular season is kind of irrelevant mm -hmm. and doesn't matter. And so as long as they qualify, which they're going to qualify. I think that Kyrie and KD is a deadly combination. If they can get Ben Simmons out there playing some defense, I would not be shocked if they came out of the East. Uh, but the champion is going to come out of the West in the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's hard not to pick the Suns, but that's a perfect segue, Jason, because I wanted to get your opinion, and it's still NBA-based, but I think you, when you look at some of these young guys, uh, you look at Melo Ball, you look at John Morant, you look at Luka, you look at Jason Tatum, Trey Young. These guys, to me, seem a lot more about ball than the, the older heads right now that we see in, in kind of the way the media works when the NBA. You don't see a whole lot of stuff coming out that we see now with some of the veterans with this younger class, which I think could help save the NBA at the end of the day. I, I love the way the young group kind of operates. Have you noticed that a little bit? Certainly. I, I think those guys are trying to make a name for themselves, and so on court matters more to them. They're trying to decide – Look, LeBron James is clearly at the end of his career. Mm -hmm. I know he's the leading scorer in the league, but, you know, he's 37 years old. It doesn't look like the, the Lakers may miss the playoffs. And so these guys, those young guys you're talking about, are trying to decide who's got next, who's going to be the next person in line to get some mega Nike deal. And so, yeah, they're focused on their performance right now. That's what's most important. I won't be shocked that once they – decide yeah. that two to three years from now if they then don't stick their finger in the air and go, oh, okay, well, Twitter tells me I should think this, <laughs> and this is what Nike says I need to do to build my brand. And so, you know, it, it is, I, I all those guys you rattled off, John ja Morant and Luka Doncic for sure, I enjoy watching them play, and certainly Luka last year, I, I believe it was last year in the playoffs, I really loved his performance, but mm -hmm. uh I'm not so sure that once they establish themselves a little bit more and take over for this, for LeBron, Kevin Durant, on that era, that they won't turn as woke as everybody else. 
And uh, you know, it's it's funny, like Harvey Dent said, either you die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. I guess we'll see how that kind of plays out with those guys. But I do uh, want to shift a little bit here, play a little transition defense. I guess you could say our offense. I'm a defensive guy, it's the way I look at it. <laughs> uh, looking at, at the Final Four, uh, I mean, Jason, I don't think you could have scripted a crazier matchup with North Carolina and Duke finally playing each other in the tournament in the Final Four, but with Coach K, Mount Rushmore, the sport of college basketball, on his way out, and Hubert Davis taking over for another Mount Rushmore guy on his way in, is this the most hyped college basketball matchup that we've ever seen? I'm trying to go back through and and in my mind and look at It's hard not to say yes. No, Jake. Jake no. Jake. What do you got, Jason? Please indulge. Jake, indulge 13? Uh, I, I, I just turned 14, so not close. Yeah. No, seriously, you're in your 20s, right? Uh, l- late 20s, early 30s. We can just barometer it around there, right. you know. So, look, man, when the Fab Five, mm. Duke and Michigan, this is like when great players actually stayed in college <laughs> and, you know, there were pros everywhere. I was – and this was a regular season game. I went down to Cameron Indoor Arena because I covered the Fab Five. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Chris Weber, Jawan Howard, Jalen Rose. I think Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurley, Grant Hill. Uh, you're t- awesome. And crowd and the games really mattered. And uh, so, and then when I think about UNLV and Duke, I think meeting in the NCAA tournament in the Final Four, I, it, it's, it's hard for me to go there. And look, this is a nice little matchup. But if you go to the most people that will be watching that game, Naming any of the players on the court will be very hard. When you just hype the game, you just name the two coaches as a way of hyping it. And th- that's that doesn't compare to Chris Weber versus Christian Leitner. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Coach K versus Hubert Davis. Yeah, that's nice. And Coach K's potential last game coming against North Carolina. That's nice. And it's good. You know, I think in the last... 10 years? Is this perhaps the most hyped and interesting college basketball matchup we've had? May, yes. But, yeah. you know, when you start talking about, you, you do know that uh, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson met for the true, national True. Team. Indiana Have State. We know that guys? the French Lick yeah. Assassin. <laughs> I know. It, I'm, I, yeah. I can go back that far. About That's about where the timeline ends. That's about where my, my Dorito Fry timeline ends. Fly slam a jam when they were in the oh man, there, there's been so many. Patrick Ewing and Georgetown. I can't. I think they played against Hakeem Olajuwon. They were in the yeah. There the was uh, man. I, I did a short, yeah. Jason. It was it was like Georgetown. I'm trying to remember who they were playing, but there was like a total counting the coaches, six Hall of Famers in one game that they were actually playing against each other and coaching. But before I get to my colleagues who have great questions, they're not as good as mine. I'm basically like the Riddler off Batman, <laughs> but uh, they're almost as good. I know we're switching up, but NFL overtime. I always love when the NFL tries to get something right and then finds a way to do something illogical while fixing something. Why would you have a different overtime for the postseason as opposed to the regular season? I don't understand that, but I do like they're like they're trying to change the rule. Maybe the NCAA can look at targeting, but who knows? That they're not exactly the brightest bulbs in the bunch either. Prisoners of the moment, that's what drive the NFL doesn't have a vision, doesn't have real leadership. And so, oh, my God, Josh Allen didn't get the ball in overtime. <laughs> we need to fix that. Mm-hmm. And so that's what they've done. There's no vision driving the NFL. They just react to whatever is trending over Twitter and, you know, try to put out fires. I, I, I thought it was stupid when they cut the regular mm-hmm. season overtime down to 10 minutes mm-hmm. rather than the full 15 mm-hmm. minutes. That was stupid. Uh, I, I don't. I, I kind of like the original adjustment of both teams getting the ball. The mm-hmm. other team doesn't score a touchdown. We were fine. Nothing criminal happened to Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen didn't deserve a chance to get the football. <laughs> he had 60 minutes to win the game. The Bills had 60 minutes to win the game. And there's going to be a little bit of luck involved with the coin flip. Uh, as it relates to overtime. That's why you should win the game in regulation. This change is unnecessary. Uh, I don't mind it, but it's unnecessary, and it's just more prisoner-of-the-moment thinking from the NFL. Uh, I I agree 100% prisoner-of-the-moment thinking. Cone, 
You're not a prisoner of the moment. No. It's your moment. Time to ask the question. Don't screw it up. Let's stay on the NFL. I want to talk to you about Tom Brady. Over the past few months, he kind of retired. Then he really retired. Now he's coming back. I guess there's only so much golf one can play, Jason. But my question for you is, what are your expectations for Tom Brady? And will he win an eighth Super Bowl? Uh, I don't think he'll win an eighth Super Bowl. And that's no reflection of him. I just think you know, Bruce Arians and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers aren't that kind of dynasty where they're going to be repeating uh, like the Patriots did. Uh, And then, you know, what's more interesting to me is the outside possibility. Does Tom Brady really want to be in Tampa? Hmm. There are these rumors that, you know, there was a trade bubbling between Tampa and the Miami Dolphins. And when you look at what the Dolphins did going out and getting Tyreek Hill, mm-hmm. going out and getting uh, the, the offensive tackle from uh, the yeah. New Orleans Saints Armstead, and really showing yeah. up yeah, uh, yeah, showing up their offense. It, 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 it makes me think. And, you know, Stephen Ross is a Michigan guy, has known mm-hmm. Tom Brady for a, a long time. I, I wonder if Tom Brady really wants to be in Tampa at this stage in his career and if – if his lack of enthusiasm for being in Tampa will impact his play at all this season, if he has to play there, I'm I'm not convinced he and Bruce Arians are really all aboard on the same page. I think that, uh, you know, and I did a column about this and did a show about this, that Tom Brady is, is in his old age, is using his leverage and success the same way LeBron James used his immense talent to kind of bully organizations into Mm. doing things the way that he wants it. And so I I just wonder if if Tampa is still the ideal fit for Tom Brady. That is going to be interesting to see, maybe a little foreshadowing from the Dolphins. All right, Blaine, you're up. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's let's stay on the NFL, NFL lately. We've had a Colin Kaepernick sighting lately, so I want your opinion on this. You know, hasn't played in five years. Do you see Colin Kaepernick taking another snap in the NFL? He shouldn't. Uh, You know, he wasn't that good at the end of his career. Mm -hmm. He was trending the wrong direction. He's no better five or six years later. Uh, And so this is what social media and how much influence it has over the NFL, that he's still even being discussed, is a joke. And I do think that Seattle and Pete Carroll may bring him into camp. I think that what will stay it stand in the way, perhaps the reason why that hasn't happened, is Collins' delusional salary demands. Mm-hmm. Uh, Collins, like a lot of people, that Twitter is his Bible and his gospel. And so Twitter tells Colin Kaepernick that <laughs> here is – you're as good as Tom Brady. You're as good as Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, my God, if, if it wasn't for racism, you would have three Super Bowls right now. He actually believes that. That is scripture to him. And so his salary demands seem to, seem to be outrageous. And that's what has – he would have been signed in 2017 if his salary demands were reasonable. Uh, I, they're probably still not reasonable right now. And so if I had to vote whether he'll ever – throw a pass in an NFL regular season game again, I would probably vote no, but not with a lot of confidence because, yeah. again, the NFL's lack of leadership, the, Roger Goodell and the people running the NFL, they want Colin Kaepernick back in the league. In the league, They think there's peace through capitulation, and so they, they think, if oh, man, if we just bring Colin Kaepernick in the league, they'll quit calling us races. No, they won't. They'll just <laughs> find a new target. Uh, for sure. Peace through capitulation. I, I don't think I could write it down myself. <laughs> Seeing a little bit of that around the world right now. But Jason, before you go, I, number one, Fearless, it's fantastic, man. I love love watching it, love listening to it. What you're doing with the Blaze is awesome. But the the biggest question we're get, you're going to be asked today is one that I'm going to start asking every guest from here on out. Are aliens real? Most important question I could possibly ask you. In your mind. Only because I haven't given it a lot of thought, <laughs> and 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 because I, I have given it a little thought. I've watched documentaries and shows, but I've never done a deep dive on mm. it. And so I'm gonna have to say no. 
Okay. Because I just haven't given it enough thought. Although there's a good part of me that thinks, yes, aliens are real, mm -hmm. and that uh, who and that Joe Biden probably is one. Hey, well, I, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm telling you right now. Adam Silver is a hundred percent alien. The NBA commissioner. Literally, if you put a gun to my head and said, Jake, you have to find an alien. It's a hundred percent Adam Silver. I'm, he's probably walking through the Men in Black lobby right now, laughing while he's watching this. Uh, but Jason, I appreciate it so much, my friend. We'll give you some time to deep dive on that. Next time we have you on, we'll see uh, kind of if you if you furthered your deep dive into the whole alien ordeal. But brother, I really appreciate it. Everybody needs to go subscribe. Jason Whitlock on YouTube, The Blaze, Fearless. It's great stuff. Uh, the podcast is amazing, man. I really am, am honored to interview and appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me on. I, I kind of like you guys' set. That's pretty impressive. It's hey, pretty right. dope. Thank you, sir. Jason, it's I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty dope. And at some point, Cone is going to dunk over Blaine on this basketball. That is going to happen, Jason. Without point, a doubt. That'll we'll that'll send you the happen. footage. We will send that'll you that never footage. Happen. We will send it to you. There will at least be a... Uh, Flagrant two, if that happens. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. But no, brother, I appreciate it, man. Keep up the great work. Thank you. All right. Jason Whitlock, yeah. man. One of the coolest. Dude, that was awesome. One of the coolest. If you like that content, go ahead and subscribe because we're going to be balling every day on Crane and Company. Hit that like button while you're at it and go ahead and smash it like Derrick Henry on an ISO run.